Hello, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Connect Africa. Welcome to our bi weekly session every Tuesday and every Thursday with Kwame Gonza, where we analyze topics related to Africa, what's happening in the continent, and globally that impacts Africa. Uh, so, we are here today to uh, give analysis you know currently we have seen a lot a lot of it, it seems that all roads are leading to china uh, so top world leaders you uh, european union officials and others from middle east including also africa so that's where uh, our interest lies and uh, that's why we are going to analyze why uh, these african leaders are visiting China, what is the reason, uh, what is the benefit in it from, from both perspectives, from African and China perspective, what are the things that uh, Africa should be cautious about, uh, and also uh, given uh, or considering the current situation, how China is bullied by the West, uh, particularly led by the US because of its prominent presence in the continent. What are the things we need to note? Uh, so this, all these questions will get an answer today if you tune with us uh, as Kwame is here to do that for you. Welcome Kwame. Thank you so much, Malet. Thank you so much. I'm glad uh, to be here. And I want to welcome all those who are watching. First of all, I want to appreciate each and every one of the people who are watching this channel. And we want to encourage you to share the channel and invite other people because the issues we are discussing on behalf of the continent, they are extremely important. And we are not only discussing these issues, but we are also working towards, you know, pushing uh, for the interests of Africa. And that means uh, working towards the unification and engaging uh, the leadership on the continent on behalf of the African uh, civil society. So these are activities which we are engaged in uh, currently. So as Marit, uh, you know, rightly mentioned, we are here to discuss. We have seen a barrage of African leaders. We have seen a number of African leaders uh, visiting China. You know, we saw President Samia Suluhu of, of, of Tanzania. Uh, we saw, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, President Afwaki uh, visiting. Uh, we saw uh, the Congo president, Democratic Republic of Congo, visiting. So a number of African leaders have been visiting back to back. So this is what we want to look at. Why have they been uh, going to China? And what could be in it for Africa? And on the other side also, we will, we will look at what is in it for China itself. What is China looking at? What is uh, China targeting? Because these visits are coming on the back of uh, the ongoing Western propaganda that China is burdening uh, Africa mm -hmm. with a lot of debt. Yet we have seen on this channel, we have analyzed it for you, and we have shown you that China's debt or, or, or China's holding of Africa's debt or Africa's debt to China is around 13%, and the West holds around 77% with all its institutions and nations, how much they you know they hold of Africa's debt is around 77%. China holds 13 So that tells us that the information that is being put out there is false information. So these are the things which we want to examine uh, today in this uh, broadcast. So I want to thank you once again uh, for staying with us, uh, you know, as we are starting out. Share the channel, like we have said, invite other people to watch important things like this, which we are discussing, because they affect all of us. They affect each and every one of us on the African continent. Whether you like it or not, these things affect you. So it is important to know how they affect you and then position uh, yourself uh, in that direction or even making a contribution in the various regions or areas or corners of the continent where you are. It helps you to be armed with this information and then also make your argument and also prevent the lies. You have to defend yourself from the lies that are being spread 
you know, especially from the Western world. So China has come under that attack by the Western world. So, but we want to examine with figures, with figures, we want to examine. We are not here uh, to defend China, but we are here mostly to defend Africa. And defending Africa it means, defending Africa means that we have to look at our relationships with the rest of the world objectively, objectively, in that sense and in, 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 the, in the very meaning of the word objective, and then choose wisely who should be our partners on the global stage, looking at the benefits which we get from these engagements with uh, these external civilizations like China, Russia, the West, and all the others. Thank you very much, Malet. Thank you very much, uh, Kwame, for that. Indeed, uh, please, as uh, those of you who are here with us, please share. And in, as we always say, information, knowledge, it's power. It's, so let's empower each other by sharing the information. And also, if you did not subscribe, please subscribe. Uh, and then if you want to support also our channel, we will put information in the chat section in a few minutes. Uh, so... Kwame, uh, I mean, the other day we have here thoroughly analyzed uh, the visit of President Isaiah Sapolke to China by bringing, you know, a, an Eritrean analyst uh, and also from Eritrea and Russia, both. Uh, but it's not only the Eritrea president that's visiting uh, China. There, there is um, recently the DRC president, President Tsekedi uh, and then the um, president of Tanzania, that's I think the end of last year, and many others. In fact, uh, what the data shows is that in the past three decades, uh, every Chinese minister, when uh, they come to power, when whenever there is a change, uh, the first the first continent that they visit is actually uh, Africa. That's how important for them but there's a lot of noise by the western media you know putting this the, the number of african countries that visited uh china and the number of um, uh, how many times china sent its delegates to uh, to africa the number is proportional it is not i mean uh, first of all uh, I, I, I would be happy and it would be really a good, a good background for our uh, audience here to give us an overview this visit or relation uh, of African leaders to China or vice versa did not start uh, today or is that so? I mean, what's new? Why a lot of noise by the Western media? Uh, thank you very much, Malit. Uh, According to uh, the research uh, organization uh, called uh, Development Reimagined, uh, this organization which is based out of China, uh, and this organization has various researchers from across the globe, but it has its headquarters uh, in China, mm -hmm. uh, looks at these people, they look at China's relationship with the rest of especially the global south the rest of the countries all the other countries but especially the global south and looking at china's interests and the interests of these particular countries and how they can cooperate with china and how they can benefit um each other it carried out uh, a research recently and there's an article which was published called the agency bargaining power and Africa, you know, Africa's uh, or African leadership visit to China. It is called the Agency Bargaining Power and African Leadership Visit to China. In this, they said that between 2009 and 2018, Chinese leaders have visited the African continent about 82 times hmm. between 2009 in 2018, Chinese leaders have visited the African continent 82 times. And within the same period, within the same period, 
African leaders have visited China 222 times. So this means, this means that African leaders have visited China twice the times Chinese leaders have visited Africa, more than twice, actually. Hmm. More than twice. Actually, it, it could even go, uh, it, it, when you look at it, it's around three times. <laughs> three times. African leaders have visited China three times compared to hmm. the Chinese leaders. And Tanzania actually tops the number of countries which have visited. It tops the, uh, the list between this period with a visit of around nine times. And that list is followed by countries like uh, South Africa and Seychelles and Zimbabwe, which have visited like around eight times within this period. Hmm. So this tells us that African leaders actually have visited China more than Chinese if we, or officials. So I want to reiterate that, meaning that the narrative that has been shown or that has been pushed around on the media, especially in the Western media, that China is enslaving Africa is not true. As we have seen in the past, I encourage those people who have not watched uh, that segment where we talked about the IMF. We have spoken about the IMF and its debt, how it is burdening Africa with the debt. And we said, like I said in the beginning, that China's holding of Africa's debt is 13%. China's ownership of Africa's debt is 13%. And the West's ownership of Africa's debt is only... Uh, I mean, is as far as 77%. China is only 13% and the West is 77%. So this data also is showing us that African leaders by themselves on their own initiative and at the invitation of President Xi Jinping or the other you know, Chinese leaders and presidents, they are visiting China three times compared to the Chinese counterparts. So it means that the African presidents, they are going to China by themselves to ask for certain things, which they have not been receiving from the West. They have not been getting certain things from the West, or they have pushed to have certain things from the West, and they have not gotten those things. So they are continually looking at China as a more reliable partner. And this survey was done on actually around, this data was taken on around uh, a number of around 52 countries, 52 African countries. Now, on the 18th of April, of course, we saw the visiting of uh, President Ali Bongo. President Ali Bongo of, of, of Gabon, he visited uh, China. Uh, China and Gabon also have a, a, you know, a, a, a lot of cooperation and a lot of trade together. China is the biggest uh, trade partner of, of, of Gabon, just like all the other African countries. We know that China is the biggest trading partner of the African continent. And we have seen also that China in the current era, or what President Xi Jinping calls the new era, Africa has been pushing for trade and not aid. So I think that it is only natural, it is only natural that China pushes this relationship to that level. Or it is only natural that African leaders will visit China increasingly because they are pushing for a different narrative compared to the narrative that the West is, is pushing. China is pushing for trade, wants to trade with the African countries. And the African leaders too, they want trade. They don't want aid. 
This is the narrative that has been going on across the, you know, uh, the African continent, that we want trade and we don't want aid. We want increased trade. And that trade should be fair trade. So what does this tell us? It tells us that China is a more reliable partner, number one. Number two, it tells you that China is giving better trade terms. So until the West improves its trade terms with the African continent, these visits are, going, are going to continue. It is going to continue in that direction until the West has uh, the audacity to improve its trade terms or increase its trade, its trade terms, which we are not seeing to date. And instead, what we are seeing is an increased arrogance, level of arrogance and bullying that what we are seeing that they are doing to South Africa because South Africa is trying to host the BRICS and South Africa has played a very important role as a leader on the continent in regards to having an independent foreign policy and standing up to the United States and the West in matters regarding to Ukraine. So you see that African countries, because of this bullying, are continuing to go in the direction where they are welcomed and in the direction where they see that this relationship is reliable and, and is respectable. And this is a win-win relationship for the African continent. So in brief, in brief, African you know, countries or the African continent is going to continue to visit China. As we have seen, we have, we have seen Gabon visited in, in, in April. Immediately in May, in the same month of May, uh, Eritrea visited. President Afaki, you know, uh, Isaiah was, was in, in China to which they discussed different relationships. And these relationships, of course, majority of them, they are rotating around infrastructure and investment. Infrastructure and investment in, 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 in agriculture and tourism. And then China also has its interests on the other side. Like when you go to countries like uh, Eritrea, is, is strategically located, you know, between around the Suez Canal and an area which is also very central to the, you know, to the, to the Belt and Road, you know, the Road and Belt Initiative, which China is working on. And then we have the Democratic Republic of Congo, you know, also he visited in May. We know the Democratic Republic of Congo that they signed some contracts which are up to six billion in transfer back Congo wants infrastructure because when you look at areas like the eastern part of DRC, where uh, President Felix Sekedi is working with the East African Regional Force, East African Community Regional Force, which is one of the reasons he pulled the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African Community to help stabilize the eastern part. The eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo doesn't have a lot of infrastructure. So he's trading minerals and uh, this program is called infrastructure for minerals china needs the lithium china needs the cobalt china needs copper china needs timber china needs tantalum all these minerals which are instrumental in the electric car industry which china is already leading we have already spoken about this briefly when we spoke about BYD and then its rival, of course, Tesla is also in China now, right now, manufacturing numerous countries, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, I mean, numerous companies in China are uh, manufacturing electric cars. So Congo is very important in that aspect uh, to China as it also uh, wants uh, the, uh, the infrastructure which China uh, can give. So the relationship of the African continent is going in this direction because of these various reasons, the respect China is giving uh, uh, and, and the interest, the mutual interest between the two uh, parties, the, you know, Africa and China or on the other side. 
Thank you, Kwame, really, for uh, clarifying that because the Western media is going crazy left and right, uh, bullying uh, China and African leaders as well. Why they are visiting as if, you know, uh, I, sometimes I really wonder how they take us, how they consider us. I mean, I, I just get, I just cannot understand it. Yeah. Uh, now, I heard you saying that, you know, uh, some of them, they are visiting China with their own initiative and with uh, understand them, uh, understandably because uh, they, there are some things that, that they are not getting from their relationship from the other world, from the Western world. And, and so they go and because China believes so also uh, in trade, not in aid. Uh, but why should it, for some other who we say that or who you say that they get invited, why do we think as a reason that China invite, China is inviting this country? Of course, you just touched now at last uh, some of the reasons. You're muted. Yes. So, so, so to add on what I've already said, we have, we have a couple of reasons. China is still industrializing, even though some people are saying that China has been his its a level of growth has been slowing down. Its economy has been slowing down, uh, but China is still has interest. In, in resources from Africa, like we've mentioned, one part of what you know, one of it is the uh, the electric car industry that is going on. But even on that side of electrifying the automobile industry, uh, there's coltan, there's, there's there's tantalum. All these mineral resources are still important when it comes to electronics, and there's oil also. This is a very important resource. You, you look at countries like Gabon, Nigeria, uh, you know, Angola. China is importing a lot of uh, oil from these countries. Actually, is importing around 1% of its oil from Gabon, from Gabon, countries like Gabon, where President Ali Bongo comes from. Various countries on the African continent have various interests have various advantages which china wants to take uh you know uh, uh advantage of or have various goods which china wants to uh, you know to take advantage of when you go to south africa is very strategically located also where where we we see the, the, the direction of, of south africa where it is and then it is also one of the largest economies on the african continent and it, it stands, it is trying in this regard also to stand against the West. South Africa, countries like South Africa, they are in BRICS. They are together with China in BRICS. So this is a, a very important reason for China to, you know, to be in Africa. Like this year, they are terming it. That is why even they brought the BRICS to, 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 to South Africa, which is happening in, in August. And of course, they are resisting it. The West is trying to disorganize it to push it and spread lies about it as if it is not going to happen in, in South Africa. So they are terming this BRICS summit that is happening in South Africa, they are calling it BRICS and Africa. You see? So that means China places a lot of importance on the African continent. And you have mentioned, you have mentioned also that the Chinese foreign minister, when he was appointed the first place, actually majority, all, almost all of the foreign ministers in China, when they are, they are, they are uh, appointed, immediately the first place they visit is Africa. And for that matter, uh, the foreign minister of China, the first place he visited was Ethiopia. Why? It's because in Ethiopia, that's where the, the headquarters of the African Union is. This is the administrative capital of the African continent. So it is only right for him to, to visit there because they are seeing where the continent is going. Now, number two, apart from the resources and this, the reasons of strategic locations, like, like you can talk of Ethiopia also is a very strategically located country. Tanzania is also just across 
China. It's just across China that is very near China. So these countries are strategic for China. Apart from resources and strategic reasons of these countries, we have the issue of the United Nations. I've mentioned that Gabon right now is sitting on the United Nations Human Rights Council. So China is also sitting on it currently on the United Nations Human Rights Council. And we have the West which has been accusing it has been accusing China of uh, violation of human rights of the, the Uyghur people in Xinjiang. So China is also looking for those partnership, those diplomatic partnership and solidarity at the United Nations in voting. Remember, Africa has 55 states. So those are 55 votes. So if you can secure those there's no where they can, you know, uh, there's no one who can defeat you at the, U at the UN. That means all your interests will be taken care of when it comes uh, to the voting at the United States or, uh, I mean, at the United Nations or as far as the United Nations uh, votes and voting on various issues are concerned. So these three reasons, I think they are the reason, uh, they, are, they, are, they are the very core basis of why China you know, is instead ramping up its engagement with the African leaders and also inviting them uh, to the uh, to the uh, uh, to Beijing, to the to the Chinese capital. But on top of that, also, I think there's uh, there's another issue which you we, we would mention that China, of course, historically has been with Africa yeah. when it comes to colonialism, solidarity against the West. Right now, we see China has, go, has come under a lot of attack. So China also, for purposes of solidarity, coming together so that we can work together and strengthen ourselves against the colonialists who are, or their interest is only to colonize and brutalize and exploit. So China is trying sort of to create also that link so that we can have that solidarity you have seen. Of course, you have seen other countries visiting like, uh, uh, you know, Brazil, you know, uh, all these is trying to create that solidarity so that we can be able to stand against uh, imperialism and fight against it and its uh, exploitation. Uh, thank you, Kwame, really for that. And, you know, as in to remind us China's uh, relationship with Africa is historical because many people tend, I mean, Africans, us, uh, tend to believe or take it for granted that uh, our relation only started when we, when Africa started to be against neocolonialism. No, I mean, China has been there uh, historically, politically, economic wise, culturally, uh, military wise so it's uh, uh, it, it's it, it's uh, it has been a long way this uh, uh, china and the continent uh, or africa's relation uh, has come but we cannot deny now that it has been strengthened since there is uh, a common interest uh, let's say that now this relationship is of course established it has been there for a long time uh, People say that, um, or analysts or different media uh, say that there are things that Africa uh, should be cautious about, or the Western media go say uh, blatantly, uh, actually uh, go accuse China. It, the relationship is exploitative, uh, not really a reciprocated one. Uh, is that so? Or what are the things uh, that Africa should be cautious in this uh, relationship that it had, uh, it's having with China? Yeah, I, I think that uh, it is important, of course, that Africa is cautious. Cautious why? Not uh, because China behaves like the West cautious to understand that China has its own interests. Mm -hmm. However much we may have this relationship with China, which is far better, 10,000 times better than the West, 
just like what uh, Professor uh, Yanis Varoufakis, who was the former uh, Greece, I think, finance minister, uh, mentioned that Africa's relationship with the West is thousand times. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Af Africa's relationship with China is a thousand times far better than the West. China behaves a thousand times better than the West when it comes to the African continent. Regardless of that, I think Africa has to be cautious in a way that we have to define our interests mm -hmm. we, when we are going. This is one thing which we have to be very careful about as Africans. We should have our interests defined that this is what we want to achieve. As Africans, this is what we want to achieve because China is coming as a unified entity. And if we do not define our interests, that is where we, we are normally trapped. You know, whether it is the Indians, whether it is the Turkish, because we see all these ones throwing up, whether it's the Europeans, whether it's the UK, which has come out of the European Union and, and is trying to assert itself, reassert itself. What will trap us is if we do not define our interests. Number two, I think that aside in defining our interests, we need to be cautious and understand <coughs> that regardless of how we define our interests in our narrow countries, smallish countries, we cannot have those interests matching up to the power of China, which is an economy of more than $30 trillion if you are talking about purchasing power, which is right now, right now is rated the biggest economy in the world by purchasing power, is bigger than the United States right now. So the interests of Gabon or Kenya or Togo cannot match up with the interests of China, regardless of how China may favor us. So what does this say? This means as Africans, we need to, be vigorous, work vigorously in the direction of unifying our interests, banding up our infrastructure inf interests. For example, we have spoken about uh, the African Union in, in Agenda 2063 has projects like the uh, the, the the integrated uh, the the Africa integrated high speed rail network. Mm -hmm. Agenda 2063. It has the 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 Africa integrated high-speed railway network. So it is important, it is important to understand that if we integrate our interests in form of infrastructure and say we want a railway network across the African continent, this is what we are coming with China, help us to do this and we push it. All the leaders, whenever they go to China, they should be able to highlight this particular list of interests which we have defined, that means we have a core, you know, a core list of interests, a core list of infrastructure, which we are pushing. So this is one of the things which I would be cautious about. This is one of the things I would uh, uh, caution the African leaders when they are going there, regardless of the interests they may have in the various states, those interests cannot match up. And I want them to have those interests, as we have said, definitely. But those interests cannot match up or cannot upset China's interests. It will always get an upper hand, a slight upper hand, you know, upon the small countries. But when you come as a union of African states and you say we have a list of intercontinental infrastructure projects that we want to achieve on the continent, highways, a high speed railway network, or what we have defined, or what even I'm, I'm currently working on, the uh, 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 the the Africa Rail, you know, the Africa Railway Triangle Network Master Plan, which is supposed to enhance the objectives, or to help to achieve and fast track the objectives of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. So such projects, these are projects which we should be going to China with. So I want to repeat number one. We need to, see, to define our interests, clearly, clearly define our interests. 
but more so those interests, if we, had, we have defined them, we need to go to China and engage it with the unified continental infrastructure project. And also our GDP, you see that on the other side, will be enhanced that we are a GDP of $3.5 trillion. It means that we will be on good footing because China, China is a, an economy when you are talking about nominal GDP of 19 trillion, if we have 3.5 trillion, at least, at least we can push for a better deal compared to a country going with a hundred billion dollar or some of them four billion dollars to engage with China. On the on this African continent, the biggest economy we have is 504 billion dollars. It's not even up to one trillion dollar. So how can you negotiate with $19 trillion? So I think there, our interests, we need to balance it when it comes to our engagement with China. Oh, very interesting, really, very interesting. Uh, I always enjoy, I mean, if this my full-time job is, is here and, you know, get listened to, uh, uh, we learn a lot, really. Um, important point from what you said uh, is that uh, China, you, you said, I, 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 I do, I'm quoting you, quote, uh, I want China to have that interest and they may have an upper hand uh, because they are stronger uh, economically, uh, but that should push us to unify uh, and so that we, we can be, you know, competitive uh, and in, uh, remind the continent that uh, this time around uh, we cannot continue like this. So we have to uh, unite and come with a better deal. I, I'm sure. I, I hope I understand. I, I understand uh, correctly. Um, now let me just uh, read some of the comments here. Uh, China uh, give us, gives us money to build our country, not food aid. Uh, like the West, we, uh, we African, we can uh, feed ourselves. Um, uh, another uh, audience is that China has been, or CNS, CNS, he said that China has been providing financing and technical support for infrastructure, <laughs> while the West provides finances for projects like democracy, human rights, freedom, etc., uh, or etc. Uh, wondering, so, so the same uh, com uh, commentator uh, continues, wondering at what point a democracy project will generate return to enable repayment of the financing loans. <laughs> I think that's uh, well said. Um, yeah. Um, now that you have uh, clarified for us, listed for us, what are the things that Africa should be cautious that it has to define uh, its interest uh, continental wise. So what should, uh, we or Africa expect uh, as benefits from this relationship? Um, of course, the benefits uh, we are getting from Africa, we have seen, uh, we have seen them numerous in the past. Uh, the relationship between Africa and China, number one is much better than compared to the West. A thousand times, like what uh, the Greece, uh, pra, you know, uh, former Greece finance minister Yanis Varoufakis said that Africa's relationship with with China is much better than a thousand times much better than Africa's relationship with the West. So we can expect that relationship to continue. But also, what we are, we can see is that China is a much more reliable and i want people to listen to my words very carefully i've not said that is the most reliable yeah, you know uh i've not said that is the most reliable but uh, i say that is much more reliable i'm using i want to rephrase that word because is is more reliable than the available partners on the global stage mm -hmm. so we can expect that relationship with china to continue 
with the revisions from both sides. And especially as Africa, we have a lot of work to do that we have to mobilize ourselves to come together, like we said, and start negotiating as a unit. This will actually also help China to increase its respect for us. And one thing I can say is China has actually helped us to move in that direction of mobilizing ourselves so that we can negotiate together as a unit. It has, you know, it has helped us at certain instances. For example, the building of the African Union headquarters. This was a sign that China is trying to help us to move in that direction of working as a union. It built for, for us the headquarters of Africa CDC, Center for Disease Control, Africa Center for Disease Control. China built it. So it shows you that China is trying to help you to move in this direction. So we can expect that relationship to continue with the enhancements, with the improvements, like what we are seeing. President Felix Shisekedi, when he visited, he renegotiated the contracts which we assigned with Chinese corporations. For the West, you cannot renegotiate. Once you sign contracts, regardless of the head of state with the West, you will, they will not allow you to renegotiate those contracts. For example, if the IMF gave you a bad deal, the next president, who is the one that did not negotiate it, cannot change them. Those are the clauses these people put in their contracts. But for China, when you go back, you can renegotiate them. And actually, Yanis Varoufakis, the, the Greece, you know, uh, the former Greece, you know, uh, finance minister, mentioned it also in one case that China bought a concession on a port in Greece. And he thought that that concession was not in favor of Greece. And it was so much in favor of China. And he brought a proposal to the Chinese and he told them that they have to renegotiate this and recommit to more investment into Greece. And they agreed. And so this is what we are also seeing today that President Felix Sekedi of the Democratic Republic of Congo went went to China to renegotiate the contracts that were signed by President Joseph Kabila, which some of these contracts, some of these mine, mining contracts were not good for the Democratic Republic of Congo. So we can expect such a flexible relationship. Which flexible relationship we cannot get from our nagging friends from the West who are always riding us and always worrying us and always making noise for us. They have a very inflexible, intolerant, you know, indifferent attitude towards Africa. So the more they do this, actually, it is nice. It is good for Africa so that Africa can continue to enhance its relationship with, 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 with China. Number two, China has supported Africa at the United Nations continuously on issues which favor Africa. For example, in the support for Africa's push for inclusion into the United Nations Permanent Security Council, Africa getting two seats. China has supported continuously, China has supported Africa in this regard. When it comes to vote on issues of racism, yeah. condemning racism, while the whole Western world has stood against voting against racism, China has voted with the black people across the globe with the Africans, China has voted with them in condemnation of this racism that is being perpetrated, especially, majorly, majorly in the West. China has stood with Africa in condemning sanctions, in the various sanctions that are imposed on numerous African countries. You can talk of Eritrea, you can talk of Zimbabwe, you can talk of all the numerous. So the support from from China is overwhelming, is overwhelming. But we as Africans, we just need to position ourselves in a way that we take maximum benefit from this uh, relationship. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kwame, uh, really uh, for that, for listing out uh, the benefits. Uh, again, it clarifies for those uh, who think it's just uh, another superpower country on the other side of the block, the power block. So there's nothing that it brings uh, to Africa, but we have to really research uh, and do our homework. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, for that. Now that, now let's move on China specifically. Uh, we have seen that how the West is bullying China left and right again for its presence uh, in Africa uh, and uh, in, in fact pushing China now to be really uh, a on the uh, completely, I mean, it has its relation, trade relation, and other relation, relationship with the West, but completely siding uh, by pushing the country to side now uh, with Russia, kind of. Uh, what is the impact? I mean, considering all these attacks, all these noises, and God knows, I mean, document wise, what they are doing or policy wise. Uh, what what are you know what is the impact for Africa? What, what are the things that we need to be uh, cautious? Yeah. So uh, from the pressure that the West is um, is, is pushing. Uh, on the African continent. I think that China is also moving in the uh, in the direction actually of enhancing this relationship. Like what we are seeing uh, that BRICS is happening in South Africa. China has continued its strategy of continuous engagement with the African continent. They have been saying that China is divest, you know, uh, the, you know, divesting out of the African continent is is not investing anymore. So the figures are saying otherwise. Actually, China instead is re-engaging with the African continent. This shows you that China, when you look at President Samuel Suluhu, for example, she mm -hmm. signed. They were talking about reinvesting in in the port, you know, during. President Samuel, you know, uh, Suluhu, when she came to power, there was President Pombe, John Magufuli. Uh, President John Magufuli sort of alienated China because he was so focused on the independence, you know, of Tanzania acting independently or Africa acting independently without, uh, you know, interference from, from uh, the, 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 the outside world to mm -hmm. the point that he canceled one contract uh, which they had signed, the pre his predecessor had signed with China, a contract which is around uh, China investing around $10 billion in the development of a port uh, in mm -hmm. Tanzania. So President Suluhu reactivated uh, this discussion on, on investment in this port. So you can see that China is coming more to invest into a port. And just again, like we said, now here it is up to the Africans ourselves, like President Suluhu Samia, to renegotiate this port in better terms than the terms which were negotiated that President Magufuli reached a point of uh, rejecting these, these terms. So it is up to President Samia Suluhu now to renegotiate those terms to terms which will favor Tanzania terms where you don't have to shut off all the other ports which you have in Tanzania just to operate this one, uh, which the Chinese are going to build with, with the $10 billion. Because I understand that is one of the conditions which President, uh, you know, uh, uh, President Magufuli, re you know, rejected. Because the Chinese were saying that if we build this particular port, you give us to operate it, but you have to bring all the traffic to this port. Why? because they wanted to recoup their investment very quickly before they would hand over the port to Tanzania. And the President Magufuli said that this one is, I cannot accept this. So it is up to President Samia Suluhu, like we say, renegotiate these, these contracts. 
We have seen in South Africa, like we have mentioned, we have seen re-engagement all over the African continent. So I think that China is continuing in the tradition of re-engaging with the African continent and is not bothered. Because on the other side, you see that China is building a coalition across the globe to counter the Western hegemony that it is pushing, like you have mentioned rightly, in regards to Ukraine, they have been pushing South Africa, for example. So it, it is building a coalition, not only of other countries, countries like Russia, India, we have seen India also pushing back on the arrogance of the West. Recently, they wanted to pull India to come into NATO. And we saw that India resisted and said that this kind of, you know, adventure, we cannot engage in it. Is an outdated mode of, of engaging the world. So China is building that coalition and Africa definitely has to be part of that, co that coalition because of the population that we have across the continent. 1.4 billion people. And Africa is being looked at as the next, you know, center of growth when it comes uh, to economic development. China has been having some challenges with regards to the, its population has been slowing down, even though not to the extent that is being exaggerated in the West. The population in China has been slowing down a little bit. So that means the young people to drive industry are going to be in Africa. So it is only important for China to continue to engage Africa because you need the young labor, you need the young people, you need the youth to run industry, to run factories. So these are all for it long-term goals which China is looking at. And from what I'm seeing, China is looking like it is saying that we will not be distracted in our relationship with Africa. Because if we add China and Africa together, we have almost 3 billion people. Almost 3 billion people, which is half of the world, almost half of the world. 50% of the, of the world. So if you have your relationship invested in Africa, you are China and you have your relationship or your destiny tied together with Africa, where the next frontier for growth and economic boom is going to happen and there's a huge market. And when you combine it together with your country, you have half of the world population, then it's just common sense that you should be around regardless of what the West is saying, regardless of the arrogance. So China is insisting also that we have to move in the direction of, you know, a win-win cooperation. Win -win. So that is their emphasis. And that is what we, we are seeing right now that is going on. And so the African leaders will continue to visit, will continue to visit, various leaders will continue to visit. And that relationship, I think that will continue to be as strengthened as we move forward with China. Thank you very much, uh, Kwame. That's it. You've you've got us uh, covered all the things, all the questions that we have, and I'm sure this uh, is a question of our audiences and many Africans, for that matter. Uh, these are the things we need to clarify. We need to give answers when it comes to Africa's relationship with China. And uh, as we always say, we bring you a research-based uh, analysis. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Kwame, for your time, for your, uh, you know, always unreserved sharing and uh, your view, your research uh, and everything. Uh, just to share some of um, the things that our uh, audiences or viewers uh, wrote here. Uh, in the 1990s, the collective West wrote wrote of Africa as a basket case. Uh, the, there even appeared articles on their media terming Africa as a hopeless uh, continent. In the year 2000, there came uh, the first forum of China uh, on China-Africa cooperation, uh, FOSAC or FOCAC, um, the abbreviation anyway, and people can see the general economic turnaround uh, for the continent, meaning after that time. Uh, it's going to be interesting 
to see the outcomes of the trade and infrastructure agreements signed recently between the DRC and China in the recent visit of uh, President Tisekedi uh, to President uh, of China. Yeah, that's our hope uh, as well, because this country have been looted again and again and again for the past 60 years. I mean, every every Western country, every uh, international, the so-called international community, everyone, individuals, you know, rebels, it has been just on a continuous looting. So we really hope that this brings something useful for the people uh, in Democratic Republic of uh, Congo. Black, by the name Black says, keep up the good work. That's a good work. Uh, God bless Africa. Yes, uh, God bless Africa and the world as well. Uh, uh, for us, uh, that was it. Thank you. Please uh, uh, give it a like, share, subscribe, uh, and please, really, if you if you find it relevant, if you find it really useful and knowledgeable, then don't keep it for yourself. Share it. That's what we need. We want to reach as much as uh, as much African people uh, as possible, Africans at home uh, and globally. Uh, so uh, sharing is uh, uh, information and knowledge is power. So let's empower each other and support our channel, please. We want to be here more often or more days during the week. So you can support our channel. I have uh, put it in the chat section uh, in our PayPal account or the super sticker or super chat. Uh, you can, you know, whatever means uh, you have or you can contact us as well uh, directly. Um, other than that, uh, I will just give maybe Kwame a minute, uh, but before I close it, uh, we will come back again. We will meet uh, on Thursday night on the same live stream program. Uh, yeah, keep on sharing. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for being uh, here. Siendes, Black, Elias, uh, and others, you know, who, who have been just uh, listening. Uh, from uh, well, where's Snovia? Where's Snovia? Snovia, I've, no, I've not heard from her. Uh, yeah, for some time. Yeah, last yeah. time she came and then, uh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I think we need to get her contact so that we can reach out to her. So I would just like to say thank you very much for everyone who has been watching. It is important that we work together. The African continent is not going to go anywhere unless each of us makes a contribution. If we work together and if we are doing that work and we have put the first foot in front, you know, support this channel, support this program. Even if you don't want to, you have to support mm -hmm. uh, us so that we can push Africa forward. So we want to thank you, those who have been faithful and have stayed with us from the start, from the beginning to the end that continue to do that and support the channel uh, so that we can elevate this channel. It can reach a level where uh, we can support the work that we are doing on the ground of talking to the various Pan-African organizations and unifying them. If you know someone out there who can support Pan-African work, uh, write down in, your, you know, in our comment sections, put down in the comment section uh, the contacts and we will reach out to them or you can write uh to mallet in the email which is in the uh, description i just uh, i'm just putting it as you speak okay yes so so write to us uh so that we can reach out to that person so that they can be able to help us to support uh, the pan-african work that we are doing on the ground and if you yourself want to support like mallet said support in the paypal our paypal uh, you know account is there and you can also support in form of super chat if you are outside uh, the African continent. We welcome all the support that you have. But first of all, uh, share the channel and also, uh, uh, you know, subscribe if you have not subscribed yet and invite mm -hmm. other people to do the same. We want to thank you very much and have a good night, a good morning and a good afternoon, depending on where you are across the globe. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, very much. So have a good evening. Uh, that's it for us. Uh, God bless you all. Bye-bye.